Hello, and welcome back to our little piece of the internet. My name is Spot. I've been brought in here to help co-host this episode of Better Tips for Pet Photos, but let's be honest, it's really all about the dogs. Jaeger, take it away. Well, thank you, Spot. It's Jaeger here, along with this little guy. He's the best boy. He's the best boy. Yes, he is. And we are going to go through some tips on taking your pet photos. Also, I've got some help this video from my nephew, Mr. Dozer, Mr. Chunky, and the nieces. I cannot forget to name them. Marshmallow, Prudence, and Cali. I just got out of my tie combo after shooting some photos in Hartsville, South Carolina with Renegade and slid into my YS t-shirt, which you can get now at JaegerShots.com. And there's more involved shots you can do with cameras and desktop computing, computing, computer apps that I'll talk about towards the end of the video. But let's just start with what everybody's probably got hold of, a cell phone. Burst mode and live photo are your best friend, so you have variety in the shots so you manage to catch those in-between movements that you just can't hardly pose a dog for unless you've got a dog that poses for photos. And forever, I've been using an app called Snapseed, not sponsored, to edit my photos right on my phone. I turn my phone upside down, I can get that foreground ground shot, having maybe Renegade in the middle and some depth behind him. And it just looks real good to get kind of at your dog's eye level or a little bit below for those heroic shots. And you can still stand above them, shoot the camera facing downwards at them and kind of get the more pitiful, sweet, feed me type facial expressions out of them. There's an old lineage that goes, location, location, location. And with that, no, oh yeah, locations matter a lot for obvious reasons. You don't want to be around busy highways or places where your pets can get easily distracted by things if they're the type to get easily distracted, like my renegade. Where are you going with it? Okay. You're on a little bit of a time limit before everybody just checks out on a photo shoot and they really are kind of like humans. <laughs> okay, what's next spot? Oh, I can finish my sentences now. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So, for those with dedicated cameras, you now have more versatility. Oh yeah, using focal lens from 35, like I did with most of Renegade and the boys' photos, all the way up to 85, 100, 200 millimeter focal lens. Generally, the things that you would normally use for humans look pretty good for your dog photos too. On some of the higher end cameras, you also have animal eye focus as well as bird eye focus, and they have these little cute icons. Animal auto focus with the two ears coming out, and bird auto focus, and also cars, but that's another camera camera and another brand. A little thing to keep an eye on like around your dog's head is what color hair is on their head. Over on the left, renegade has got the darker color behind him in the background. He's got the white hair, so he pops a little bit. The one on the right, where he's looking off in his wanderlust style, like a hipster Instagrammer, he's got a little bit brighter background. It's just a subtle thing to keep in mind when taking your pet's photos. Coming over here into the Lightroom Classic desktop editing app, and now it looks like Rennie's just not really doing much of anything. No, he's actually chasing shadows. That's one of his favorite pastimes, and I just took a photo of him in bed doing it. Now, over on the right side panel, Lightroom's got these built-in Adobe black and white filters, and I'm just gonna choose this one right here. I, I was able to get away with a very low 64 ISO, only lighting this scene, or they I knew it would be a black and white photo, so I'm just letting it with the window light. I'm just gonna do a global adjustment and brighten up the entire photo right now. Getting it just a tad bit brighter. Now I'm gonna go up to my clone stamp tool and there's a light on a TV behind him. I'm just going to take that away because it's kind of distracting and I'll clean up the background even more. Brighter things can sometimes be distracting, but that's a contradiction because the window's not really that distracting. But uh, hopefully when this photo's done, it won't be. Now I'm just gonna come up here and make a mask over Renegade's head and brighten him up now, just him. This is one of the things that you'll see in a lot of photos. And if done right, it could be subtle, but sometimes you can get away with doing it and it being kind of stylistic. I'm just gonna put some more attention here. This is going back to what I was just saying. Brighter lights can sometimes draw your eye. And I'm gonna go a step further with a second mask. I could have maybe added onto that radio gradient mask, but I'll just make a brand new mask. I'm going fast here. I'm not naming mask and layers because it's not that complex of a mask. It's just our second one. It's just gonna go over Renegade's eye. And you probably can guess, I'm just gonna lighten it up some. You can see me toggling it back and forth here. Zooming in 
for a little bit close up in the 35 millimeter broken eye lens is so sharp you actually see the reflection of the bed sheets and some of the light in his eyeballs and that's using animal eye autofocus from a sony a7 IV camera and here's a little bit more tweaking and we are done spot you want to want to add anything that closes out here do I have anything to add? Yeah, for starters, my name's not Spot, it's Nigel. Whatever stupid idea you had about giving me a fake name is just dumb from the get-go. Also, this video is supposed to be all about me. I'm supposed to be the main dog here. I don't, I don't think I said anything of the sort. It was definitely not intended if you processed it that way. Process this. You, Spot, you've transformed me into a cartoon? Even though this doesn't really, you know, look like me at at all. Silence, it's our first attempt at animation. Now listen to me, talk about you in my native tongue. <laughs> oh dear, this is just, you know, painfully awkward here, given all that you've just witnessed. And yes, I, I, I do actually wear glasses. Um, if you don't mind, could you hit the like button as well as the subscribe button and the in real life Jaeger is going to have a video about using character animator the thing that you're watching right now me do the, the talking and stuff it will explain later so you definitely are going to want to be around for that as always uh let's do the youtube things you know there's just videos on the screen to watch other stuff you know get all that uh you know nonsense out, out of the way and subscribe to never miss a shot from jaegershots.com.